because the key reference surfaces I'm working to with the wheels are the axle bores and the front faces of the rims I'm actually going to drill the holes for the crank pins from the rear as we can see in my setup here with the front of the wheel against the parallels on my rotary table I'm using the rotary table because it's an easy way of holding each wheel in turn in the same position the downside of drilling from the back is of course the fact that the back of the boss here still has the casting surface so before I do centre drill and drill and ream the holes I use a big chunky end mill to clean up the surface Although I dropped the speed down for the reamer, I still run it way too fast and all my holes end up very slightly oversized. The leading crank pins are really quite simple. I just need two diameters, 9.5mm for the section that fits inside the bush on the coupling rod and an 8mm diameter for the section that fits into the wheel. I'm using 9.5 silver steel bar so that makes half the job quite easy. I don't need to turn that diameter. So first I face it off in the lathe and then turn down the shoulder a length of 10mm down to the 8mm dimension. In fact it's 8.04 because I ran the reamer a bit fast. 8.03 slightly undercut. With the shoulder turned I cut off the crank pin from the rest of the stock, stick it back in the collet chuck, face off the end pop it out, measure it, and then face off the length. To finish off the leading crank pins, I drill all the way through at 2.3mm, and then tap to a depth of around about 10mm. I do this very carefully. I'm always wary of these smaller taps snapping off. I almost missed it but there is one final operation for the leading crank pins and that is to cut a small recess in the end of the pin for the cap to locate into. What I'm doing here is absolutely not recommended. I've got a 6.5mm slot drill held in the chuck in the tailstock and this is really bad practice. I won't be at all surprised if this hole comes in slightly oversized in terms of the diameter but I'll make the cap to fit so that's not a problem. I take it into a depth of 2.5mm. As I'm going to be lock tightening the crank pins into the wheels, I follow my usual practice and cut a little recess in the shoulder to give some space for the Loctite to do its stuff. Because I chose to face off the boss for the crank pins and the spokes for all the wheels to the same dimension with that 3.2mm offset back from the rim, I need to machine some spaces for the crank pins on the driving and trailing wheels because those bosses need to be flush with the centre hub. So I turn down the length of bar to 20mm diameter and drill it out to 8.1mm and then part off four spaces. Parting off on these lathes is, is not a pleasurable experience. They really do struggle with the rigidity and I never get a good finish. So I part each one of these spaces off oversized by about half a mil. To face off the spaces to the required thickness of 3.2mm I first make a mandrel with a short 8.1mm hole drilled in the end. After facing it off I give it a clean with some acetone. I also clean the front face of the spacer I've just parted off and using the drill as a guide I add three blobs of Loctite and then push the spacer onto the mandrel and hold it until the Loctite goes off. It's a good tip not to clean the drill. Put a little bit of oil on it will help to ensure that it doesn't get stuck with the Loctite. I'm not looking for concentricity here, so it doesn't matter if the spacer moves a little bit. And we can see here how poor the finish is from the parting off side. Once the Loctite has gone off, I face off this side of the spacer. To remove the spacer from the mandrel just takes a bit of heat from my propane torch and it comes off quite easily. 
Now that I've got two good faces on the washer, I clean it up and measure its thickness. Repeat the exercise by sticking it back on the mandrel and face it off to my required thickness of 3.2mm. The trailing and the driving crank pins all share the same key dimensions as the leading pins. That is the 9.5mm diameter for the part that fits in the bush in the coupling rods and the 8mm or 8.04mm diameter for the shoulder that fits into the wheel. However for the trailing crank pins I do need to turn the shoulder and thread this at 316 by 40 TPI which is what I'm doing here. I also put a little undercut on the bottom of the thread. For the driving wheels, the ends of the crank pins need to be squared off to 6mm for the return cranks. So I use a collet chuck in the machine vise on the milling table and use a long end mill to make the cuts. After first pass cut on all four sides, I then measure it, determine the depth for the finish cut, and then go round again. Converting Don's designs from Imperial to metric for the crank pins was a bit of a tough exercise. There's quite a lot of complicated detail and there's not a lot of space to play with between the coupling rods and the driving rods, but I'm fairly confident I've got it all right. So after double, in fact treble checking the dimensions of the pins I've turned, it's time to get on and lock tight them in place. The fit of the pins into the holes reamed into the wheels varies from a light push fit to some that are a little bit more snug. So to fit them into place I use the milling machine as a press and after applying the Loctite to the pins I press them home and then use some acetone soaked tissue paper to clean up the excess. When I apply the Loctite I put it on the bottom of the pins with the intent that as the pin is pushed home the Loctite fills the recess that I've turned in each one of them. The curing time for Loctite 648 is dependent upon a number of different factors including the temperature and also the width of the gap it's filling so I'll leave these overnight now before doing anything else and I'll wrap this video up here and we'll come back and look at fixing the wheels to the axles and the quartering in the next video. As always, thanks for watching.